There we go. Secure. While simply taking a photo of the receiving addresses from your crypto wallet does work, there is a much, much better way to do this. Maybe you're in a situation where you have like a cold wallet, uh, maybe you have a hardware wallet, or even just something running on your desktop and you wanna be able to receive uh, crypto funds, whether it's at a Bitcoin ATM or uh, some in-person sort of thing, uh, using something like your phone without taking your actual private keys with you. And uh, in this video, I'm just gonna run through how to create a watch only wallet. And I'm gonna be using a blue wallet and a couple of different hardware wallets, as well as looking at how to create one using Electrum, uh, which will cover you pretty much for any sort of cold storage you might be using, as well as uh, any of the hardware wallets that I don't cover in this video. I'll also just talk a little bit about some of the uh, risks you need to be aware of with them, as well as briefly look at why and how scammers often use watch-only wallets to uh, trick newbies. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need for this is Blue Wallet. It's available on Android and iOS, so it's a good one to use. All right, we'll open it up. Okay, so we've got Blue Wallet. We'll just put that over here. And we'll start off with Trezor Suite and then I'll just quickly run through how you'd find this same info with some other wallets. So in Trezor Suite, you would go into the Bitcoin account that you want to use for a watch only wallet. So I'll select this one. And then we're gonna click up here on the three dots and we're gonna say account details. And we want to show the public key that is XPUB. So we will show that. So there it is. So basically now, we can actually just say we want to add a wallet in blue wallet and we want to say import wallet and we are going to scan or import a file. There you go. And it's actually scanned it very quickly and it's now importing it. And there we go, success. The wallet has been imported. And if you see, if you go to the overview, we can see it has the same balance. And if we actually go into it and uh, just wait for a sec, there you go. The uh, two transactions are both there as well. And once they're in there, we can actually change the name. So we might call this uh, the same thing that we had on the Trezor. I'll just call this Slip39. There we go. We can say save. And just to confirm everything is working correctly, what we'll also do is we'll hit receive here in Trezor Suite and uh, we'll show the full address and confirm that on the Trezor. And if we hit receive here in Blue Wallet, we'll also get exactly the same address generated there. We can see now that when I receive a transaction, it is displayed uh, in Blue Wallet now automatically as well as in Trezor Suite. The process for the current default Trezor web wallet is a bit different uh, and you just click on the device, go onto the basic tab and scroll down and say show XPubs. And uh, basically what you get there are the different XPub keys for the different accounts uh, that are represented along here. So one, two, three, that's these two SegWit ones and the legacy one. Uh, and again, you will not see the native SegWit one because it does not support it. So you essentially just select the uh, XPUB key that you want. You go back into Blue Wallet, click the little plus. So you want to import, scan or import, and just uh, scan that file. And uh, it'll sit there saying it's importing the wallet. We'll just go back to account one. There we go, it has been successfully imported and uh, there's the balance there, as well as the two same transactions there, so we can uh, name that to be uh, whatever we like. And there we go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is run through how to do this with Electrum, and that's good for any hardware wallet that doesn't automatically allow you to export the account extended public key. Uh, you know, like Keep Keys don't let you do this with Shapeshift, but you can do it with Electrum just fine. And uh, the process will also work for any sort of cold storage offline wallet you might have. And uh, I'm gonna import 
this legacy account down here because I've got a keep key that I've imported uh, the private keys from this Slip39 Trezor T onto it. And I'll just run through how to do that. So you just open Electrum as normal and just run through the new wallet process. So we'll just call this keep key. And we just say we've got a standard wallet, hardware device, there's the keep key. And uh, because we want to see the legacy account, we're going to select that legacy account. Won't worry about encrypting the wallet file. So we've got the same account now represented in Electrum that we had in Trezor Suite. So we'll just minimize that. And we'll just go wallet, information, and basically what we can see here is the uh, XPUB key. And we can just click this barcode button right here that'll give it to us as an icon. If we go back into blue, we'll just import wallet, scan. There we go, so it's just importing. And there it is. So we can actually just go into here and we'll just change that one and call it keep key slip 39 legacy and there we go and uh, if we just refresh that we'll see the same transactions that we would normally see from our wallet the last thing I'll show you is just quickly how to do this using Ledger Live because it's a little bit different uh, with the others. You can just use Electrum to get it uh, that way, but you can also just get the XPUB straight out of Ledger Live. There's a little bit more you need to do with that. So if you go into the accounts page uh, and then select the account that you want, you basically click the little spanner up here and you need to go into the advanced section and basically you've got your XPUB here. Now, the thing with Ledger Live is you'll notice that all of the XPubs for all of the account types start with the word XPub, whereas if you were paying close attention when we did it for the other account types, you would notice that for the SegWit accounts, uh, they started with YPub in both Electrum and Trezor Suite, and for the native SegWit accounts, they started with ZPub. So what will happen here, if I just put that XPub key straight into blue wallet exactly as is, it'll actually successfully import the wallet. But if I go to hit receive, what I'll actually get is a legacy address that looks like this one. That is nothing at all like the native SegWit address that is generated in Ledger Live and displayed on my Ledger. And basically the reason for this is that Ledger Live uh, just gives you these raw XPUB keys and you'll need to convert them. So we'll copy the XPUB here and we'll actually need to use an extended public key converter. Now, uh, Jameson Lop has written one and I've actually forked it onto my GitHub uh, with a few improvements, including being able to convert extended private keys, but that's for another video. But basically if you put your XPUB key in here and then select that you want a ZPUB because this is a native SegWit account. Uh, you can tell because firstly, it says native SegWit down here in the advanced um, screen in Ledger Live and it's giving you addresses that start with BC1. So um, essentially, if we convert that to a ZPUB, there's the ZPUB there and there is the converted QR code. So if I now go back into Blue Wallet and import and scan that new ZPUB, we will see that it will actually find the correct addresses and uh, show us that we now have a correctly set up account. So if I hit receive now, I get a nice native SegWit address that matches the one being produced by Blue Wallet. So there you go. Watch Only Wallets are a really powerful feature. You know, they're useful if you have a totally offline uh, cold storage setup. They're useful if your hardware wallet doesn't have, uh, you know, native mobile apps that will work without the hardware wallet present. And it's just useful uh, in terms of even having a second uh, wallet that you can use to verify uh, the balance of your account. So you're not entirely trusting uh, your wallet vendor to show you that. If you're wondering whether it's possible to create watch only wallets like this for all sorts of random altcoins you might have, uh, often the answer is no, just because the software support, uh, once you get outside of the Bitcoin ecosystem, pretty much disappears almost 
instantly. However, the best multi-coin cross-platform wallet that exists is Ledger Live. Uh, even if you just have a Ledger Nano S, you can still use uh, the Ledger Live mobile app on your phone, whether it's Android or iOS, to create a watch-only wallet for all of the cryptos that Ledger Live supports, which is a fantastic feature that Ledger wallets have, and again, a big part of why I think, honestly, the Ledger Nano S is the best option uh, for anyone starting out, just in terms of the flexibility it gives you to uh, be able to create wallets on a number of different platforms and receive funds. And if you decide a ledger would be useful for your situation or want to help me out in the process, there's an affiliate link in the description. It's also important to say that while a watch-only wallet doesn't have enough information to rob you, uh, the process that you use to generate a receiving address using a watch wallet is only as good as any other software wallet, meaning uh, that something in the operating system or the watch wallet itself, either something malicious or just a bug, uh, could be something that causes that wallet to display uh, something other than the correct receiving address. So if you're receiving, you know, a very large transfer, uh, you know, the simplest solution is to verify the receive address on your hardware wallet itself. There is really no substitute for that in terms of getting the maximum level of security to guarantee that your receiving address is exactly the right one that corresponds to what is on your hardware wallet. One of these things I see happen all the time where people get scammed because someone has created a wallet for them, sort of on their behalf. But what the scammer has done is created a watch-only wallet and then given that to the unsuspecting user, making the user think that that is a fully functioning Bitcoin wallet, leading the user to do things like deposit crypto into it when really they're just handing that money straight to the scammer. And the person only realizes they have a problem when they go to withdraw or send funds. It is very easy for an unsuspecting user to think that a watch-only wallet is the real deal, it isn't. It's important to understand the difference. In terms of your security, there are two uh, main risks that watch-only wallets pose. The first one, and probably the, the real major one, is that of privacy. And you need to understand that any wallet that you import your XPUB key into, uh, or any computer or network that you send that key over, uh, can have access to all of your transactions and history. So your privacy is compromised and someone with an XPUB key can see every address from that account that your wallet will ever create, ever. So uh, there is a privacy implication there. These privacy issues can be mitigated by running your own node and uh, you know, essentially running your version of Electrum or Blue Wallet against that, but it's important to understand uh, there are privacy considerations. The only other security consideration that you need to be aware of, which is, is a fairly obscure kind of thing, but it's still real, is that if someone has your extended public keys and they get their hands on one of the private keys from that account, you know, that corresponds to that XPUB, uh, they can actually use that, the XPUB and one of the private keys, to calculate what the private keys are. So they can essentially calculate the extended private key for that account. So um, you shouldn't be like sharing or handling raw private keys ever anyway. It's also important to understand that your watch only wallet is fully standalone in that if you ever like change the private keys on your hardware wallet, like maybe you move to a new seed or something like that, your watch only wallet will not automatically reflect that change. You must manually do that yourself. You'll have to create a new watch only wallet for that new account. And I've done a video that looks at the way that sometimes this can get people in trouble. So there you go. A lot more useful than just taking a photo of the QR code from your wallet. And uh, once you get your head around the concept, it's really quite straightforward. So give it a go. And if you run into any trouble, just leave a reply and I'll do the best to help you out. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.